Hey, this is YBR with Beam&G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. This is the Ibisha Defense Falcon CIWS. What does CIWS stand for? It stands for Close-In Weapons System. So we have a Mark I and a Mark II. We're going to start with a Mark II. And before I explain what this is and how it works, here's just a quick look at what it looks like. And the Mark I and the Mark II look almost identical the only difference is what weapon is mounted in the central section right here and then this is what it looks like as it moves around and you can move it left and right and up and down to aim the weapon now the purpose of this gun is to shoot planes out of the air so we need a plane and i'm gonna go with my favorite plane of all time which is the avro arrow and we'll get the mark three because we need the fastest one we could possibly get for this and now we're gonna go ahead and move the weaponry really 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 far away we're gonna move it all the way to the islands that are in the background of italy this is an area you've never seen of italy before in my videos and all we're gonna do is we're gonna put the gun here and make sure it's in automatic mode by hitting t and you'll notice when you put it in automatic mode it automatically aims at the closest vehicle in this case that is the plane all the way across the map but it has not shot at the plane yet. It will not shoot the plane until it determines that the plane is a threat that is within its range. If it's too far away, it won't shoot at it. If it's not moving around threatening in the sky, it also won't shoot at it. Now you could put it to semi-automatic mode, which means it aims automatically and then you shoot it yourself whenever you want as well. But for this demonstration, we're starting with automatic mode because I want you to see what it's like to be shot out of the air almost completely unexpectedly because the rocket comes at you so fast that you can just barely see it before the plane blows up and we're getting pretty close to the weapon it should be shooting us probably about now so the rocket's flying from there and it's gonna hit us at any moment there it is like you see just for a split second before we explode the trail of the rocket and the game glitched up so we'll reset the plane and do this one more time and this time, I'm gonna show you what it looks like with some slow motion, because you really couldn't truly appreciate the beauty of the plane exploding when it happens that fast. To really appreciate it, we need to add a little bit of slow-mo to the mix. And we did a really nice wheelie there as we got into the air. We held that thing for much, much longer than I expected. And one nice thing about the weapon is it has a lot of ammunition, so you don't need to reset it between every single run. The Mark II, which uses the rockets, has 11 rockets before it runs out of ammunition. And the Mark I, which we haven't messed around with, uses a high caliber gun instead of rockets. So the rocket should be flying at us any moment now. There it is, you can see it. Here it comes, and there goes the plane, just exploding into pieces, and that is why the game glitches out. Well, the good news is, is we have a lot of other planes we can mess around with. But first, I want to show you the lock-on capabilities of the missile, because once the missile is locked onto your plane, you're done for. Sure, under ideal circumstances, you might be able to escape the missile. The thing is, is the missile comes out of nowhere at like a thousand miles per hour. So you're not going to get an ideal situation where you can actually outmaneuver the missile. And even if you try to outmaneuver it, you're going to have to outspeed it as well. And even using the Avro Arrow, which is one of the faster planes in BMG Drive, it's almost impossible to outspeed the missile because it actually goes at over a thousand miles per hour. A real life Avro Arrow can do that. And so can the one in BMG Drive. But you need a lot of room to get up to speed. We don't have that much room, unfortunately. We are not going fast enough to outspeed the missile. Speaking of which, there he is. So he's right in front of the plane, basically a tenth of a second from blowing me up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just teleport the plane way over here. And you would think, okay, yeah, we have dodged the missile, right? Uh, but that's where you're wrong. So we're just gonna watch what the missile does. We'll go ahead and use eight times slow-mo here. Unfreeze physics, there goes the missile, and then it turns on a dime, and it is still chasing me. Even using the magic of teleportation, we have not escaped the missile. So back to the plane, you can see the missile is chasing us and slowly closing the distance because we still have eight times slow-mo on. If we didn't have slow-mo on, we'd probably only save ourselves about 10 seconds with that teleportation before we blow up. That's it. The missile is that fast and that deadly. So I'll bring up the slow-mo just a bit until the missile gets really close to us. And then I'll bring it back down, see if we can see another slow motion explosion. Here it comes and boom. 
There goes the plane bursting into bits. Maybe later on we could actually try to get up to full speed with the Avro Era and outspeed the missile. But on this map with this runway, unfortunately, that is not going to be possible. There's just not enough distance between the runway and the rockets. And by the time you have enough distance, you're not even on an island. You're just floating in the water. Miles and miles away from anything interesting on the map. So it doesn't seem like it really matters what map we do that on. Because no matter which one we choose, we're going to be miles away from everything interesting. So we've broken the game. Now I think it's time to try a new plane. Let's try a plane I know will blow up into a lot of pieces. We're going to use the Antonov AN-12B. And we'll get the version that's holding a bunch of planks. So that way we have even more things to blow up into. And since this plane isn't as fast as the Avro Aero, I'll get it to full speed. And then I'm going to move the missiles closer to the plane so we don't have to fly as far. Because with the Avro Aero, that only took a matter of seconds. With this one, it might take a minute or two. So put it over here on the top of this mountain. That's a good viewpoint. And even while doing all that, the plane is only up to about 30 miles per hour. It's doing its best, though. That's what's important. I'm proud of you, plane. And I think with the current positioning, we'll basically get into the air, fly for about 10, 15 seconds, and then get blown up. Because that thing has some pretty good range on it. You couldn't really easily tell before because we were flying over water with no speedometer, so it was really hard to see just how far away it was when it fired. But now, we're only going about 150 miles per hour, and we're in the air, so I'm going to go to the missile, and we're going to see when does it shoot, and you'll get to see what it looks like when it does shoot. So it should be firing. There it goes, and boom. You need to see it lined up the shot, it fired, and the missile should be hitting us at any moment, even though we can't even see where it launched from. We know it's coming. We know this plane is going to blow up at any second. There it goes. And what a beautiful explosion this plane does. I love the fact that the blades are still just going like nothing's happened. And then looking behind us, there is all of the debris from the plane. I think out of all the planes I have, this one is definitely the one that blows up the most. Like with the Arrow, we always had that one big chunk of the fuel sludge, but with Antonov, it actually breaks into multiple pieces. So it's that much cooler to look at. And now let's be lazy. We're gonna teleport the plane into the air and then reset it. And then instead of using a long runway to get up to speed, we just use gravity pulling us down. And we should have the missile shooting at us pretty soon, I would think. And for this one, I wanna do a full speed explosion. And I wanna have a camera angle like this so you can really see it from a completely different angle than last time. And I'm thinking the missile should be coming at us in like five, four, Three, two, one, there. Okay, I was a little bit early, but it should be any second now. There it is. I like that because you really can't see it until you're exploding. And you can see just how strong the missile is too. Like the pieces really just go absolutely everywhere when it gets blown up. Hey, you can see the wood I put in there. I knew it was worth it. Although it didn't really matter because it just stays attached to the plane. So let's go ahead and try out the Mark I version of the weapon. So with the Mark II, it has those beautiful rockets that just seek you down. But with the Mark I, it doesn't have that. On the Mark I, it just has kind of a regular gun, which can still destroy your plane, but it doesn't feel as powerful and unavoidable as the rocket is. So it's in automatic mode. So it should fire on us once we're in range. And I don't know exactly where that range is. So this first one will be at full speed. Oh, and it's firing at us right now. You can see like the red bullet's just barely missing us, but we can't avoid it forever. And we have been shot down. And I also noticed you can actually hear it shooting at you in the distance. Unlike the rockets, which just appear out of nowhere seemingly, that one's loud. So now that I know about how close we can get before we get fired at, we can go ahead and do this again. But this time we're gonna add some slow motion so you can really see just how that one kind of tears us apart bit by bit and the missiles they just blow you up instantly and we should be getting right inside of its range so we'll go ahead and start the slow-mo eight times slow-mo and i can hear it firing right now so it's only a matter of time before i can see the bullets on my screen there they are right below me so it's gonna hit me very very soon i'm pulling up trying to dodge it for as long as i can but that's not gonna happen forever and it has just made the whole back of my plane fall off the whole back has just fallen off. Up oh, now the front fell off. Now our wings falling off. See, it's just bit by bit. Big chunks of the plane have fallen off and there is no hope of this thing flying anymore. We're just gonna fall to the ground basically. And with this one, it basically fires as long as it has a line of sight on you no matter what. With the missiles, it shoots one and it's done. So on this one, you do have to watch out because it'll run out of ammo way faster than the Mark II. I don't know what happened there. That crash was glitchy, but hey, there's my wood. 
Now let's go ahead and try a different plane. We're gonna use the ME262. And for this one, we'll just grab whichever version, not even paying attention. Doesn't really matter, they all blow up the same, except uh, it's now a submarine. Right, don't know exactly what happened there. Bring it back up into the air and be really lazy again. And then we're probably gonna need to make sure that the gun has ammunition in it. Does it right now? No, it's trying to shoot me, but it can't. Oh, that means it's already shooting. We need to do evasive maneuvers. Evasive maneuvers. Hey, it's actually working. I think we're so high up in the air, we're like just at the limit of its range to even try to shoot at me. And uh, now it's out of ammo. So yeah, the evasive maneuvers work. If it starts attacking me right at the tip of its range, it's a little bit easier to dodge probably than if you were like real close up to it. So they got more ammo. I got a fresh plane. And instead of the last time where we kind of just flew, we're going to dive, dive, dive to get real close to it. There we go. We can see it trying to shoot me. Like just for a second, I saw some of the bullets. Oh, it got me. Oh, but I can still fly. I think it ran out of ammo now and I have one jet broken, but the right jet still works. And, uh... We do have a decent, oh no, we have a decent fire. That was not what I was gonna say. I said we do have a decent amount of control over this thing where we could probably land it still if we wanted to. So we were attacked, we got hit, but we survived. I'm not gonna bother doing that because we're going like 330 miles per hour. So even if we use the flaps to slow us down, it would take quite a while. But I feel like I have more than enough control over this where I could land it if I wanted to. So time for another fresh plane and make sure we have fresh ammunition and it's still in automatic mode. Oh, and they're already shooting at me. Okay, try to dodge it. Nope. I just didn't have time to do anything. By the time I got to the plane, I was already being shot at and you can't do evasive maneuvers fast enough to avoid that, unfortunately. And I got shredded and it's just gonna fall to the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and try this again. Uh, this time though, I'm gonna give myself enough time where I can hopefully avoid the fire of the gun. And it is firing at me right now. I'm doing my evasive maneuvers, trying to avoid it. And I think that actually worked. Yeah, oh, it's still firing at me. I should listen closer. I don't think we're quite safe yet, though. I'm pretty sure it still has some ammunition. Yep, there it goes. It's shooting at me some more evasive maneuvers. And now I think it's out of ammo because it should have definitely shot at me. You can see it's trying to shoot. It can't. So we'll go ahead and reset it. I think it's still automatic mode. So we'll try to get my plane kind of going in its direction. And then we'll get shot at some more and see what happens. Where? was it exactly? I kind of lost my bearings going back and forth too many times. It should be somewhere on those mountains. Yep, there it is. It's shooting at me and it got me. I could not do evasive maneuvers fast enough on the second attempt. I think when you're higher above it, it's easier to dodge it than when you're closer to it vertically like I was right there. And that time it did a great job of completely shredding my plane. Wow. So how about we try out the Mark II versus the ME262? And with the Mark II, even though this one is the most agile plane I've had so far, I don't foresee myself being able to avoid it. Uh-oh. So yeah, this sometimes happens where it's completely invisible, I've noticed. Clearing the game cache does fix it, or maybe even just restarting the game fixes it. I don't know what causes it, though, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the game, clear the cache, and I'll be right back, and that should make it where it's working. Okay, let's see if that fixed it or not. We're also on a different map, because why not? So we want the MK2, Mark II, whatever you like to call it. And yeah, there it is. It's working perfect. We'll go ahead and put on an elevated surface. Well, actually, you don't put it on a surface because no matter what, it just floats wherever it is. It does not believe in physics. So anyways, that's there. Now we'll go ahead and grab a new ME262. We'll use the same one as before because it seemed to work pretty well. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing into the air. And again, I'm just going to be really lazy and just teleport it into the air because it's so much faster than trying to find a runway here. Probably what I would have to do is take it off from the highway, which wouldn't be the easiest thing to do, or maybe the drag strip, but this is so fast and efficient. We are in the air and we are flying in like three, two, one. We are officially flying and I just an explosion over there. And I don't think that was the missile being shot. I think it actually shot two missiles at me. The first one hit something that was in the way and then the second one actually hit me. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to test this. I'm gonna try to do the exact same flight path as last time, but I'm gonna focus on the missiles and see what they do. So we did shoot out two on that first round. So something like that did happen. Yeah, it just hit the pole. Oh, and that time it hit the electricity lines. And oh my goodness, it made it. It had two missiles locked on, shot at it, 
but there was just enough things in the way to keep it safe and okay. That was a miracle. All right, let's go in for another round. We're gonna try to keep it low as we can go to the building, so hopefully it hits a building and not me. I'm gonna get real low on it though. I can't get much lower than this and still be safe. And unfortunately, that was not low enough. Oh, and it shot us twice. Okay, so you know what? I think with this plane, you might actually get shot multiple times because once the first missile blows up and you still are kind of flying in the air, it'll shoot you again. But with the other planes, they exploded so hard that that was never gonna happen. And that, those are the planes I used in testing were the big ones because those ones were my favorites to watch them explode and stuff. Speaking of explode, how about a little bit of slow motion from like that camera angle? There you go. The whole fuel sludge is actually intact still. Although I am curious, are we gonna have another rocket coming at us soon? Uh, yep, there's rocket number two. Just broke the plane in half. First one tore the wings off, second one broke it in half. I'm gonna go ahead and do one last flight with this plane, and then I wanna try outrunning one of the missiles, which I don't really think is gonna happen, but we're gonna try it anyways. And there it is, again, a double hit on my plane. I don't know how I got lucky the other times when we was hitting the light poles and stuff and that one wasn't. Maybe it's just which rocket it was shooting and the starting location of the rocket matters. Because I think it shoots the lowest ones first. So those ones are the most likely to hit the objects in the way. Now, we need to change maps. So I'm just going to go over to Grid Small Pure. First thing I need to do is I need to have a speedometer for this plane. So we're going to go to the Customize UI apps. And then we're going to add a digital air speedometer. Which usually works with this plane, but sometimes doesn't. We'll see what happens. And the plane we're going to use is the Avro Arrow because I believe it's the fastest one there is. And the Mark III can go up to Mach 2.6, and the Mark I can only go up to Mach 2. So this one is the fast, the Avro Arrow will get that. And it looks like the speedometer is working properly. So now we just got to get this thing up to speed, which is probably going to take a while. And not much is really going to be happening. We're just going to be flying. I know it looks like it's going to get up to like a thousand miles per hour in no time, but it does start to trail off eventually. So I'll be back once we're up to speed. Okay, it's been about a minute and 30 seconds, maybe a minute and 45 seconds, and we're now over a thousand miles per hour, and I said the rockets go a bit over a thousand miles per hour. I believe it was 500 meters per second, but it seems like we're pretty close to as fast as this thing wants to go. So we're going to go ahead and spawn up the MK2 version of the CIWS. And if you're wondering why was it made by a Bishu, just think of it like Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi made the Zero fighter jet. Then they also make tanks nowadays, and I still think they make more normal planes nowadays. Like, it's just, they make everything, basically, and a Bishu would be the same way, maybe. And I gotta make sure I know when this thing fires, because I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. So it is locked on. How is the plane? It looks okay, but it can go disastrous at any second when you're going 1,000 miles per hour. So it's really still not doing anything, so let's go back to the plane. How's it doing? Oh, it's kind of crooked. I don't like that. Let's try to level it up a bit. No, don't touch the ground. If you touch the ground, you will explode. It just shot at me. So now there's a missile coming at me. I just got to see it. So far, I'm seeing absolutely nothing at all, but I'm curious if it's going to hit me on the front or if I might actually be able to overshoot its initial distance because I'm going so fast. There is one thing we can do to make things a little bit easier. If we go over to the missile launcher, we can become the missile. We just got to find the right camera for the right missile. So we want to go to missile 11 and then you can see it flying at the plane, which is surprisingly close. It's going to hit me soon. We got to freeze physics here and then go back to the plane. So there it is coming at me from the front. I'm gonna say, let's say, for example, I managed to somehow do an invasive maneuver and dodge it. I, I didn't. I would never have dodged it from the angle it was coming at me. But let's say I did. We're now traveling at over a thousand miles per hour still. Can it catch up to me? We're using two times slow mo here to try to see what's going on. I don't really see the missile right now, but I know it has to do a little 180 maneuver that's definitely gonna slow it down. But I think you can get right back up to speed almost immediately after that. And yeah, it's coming at me now. I see it on the right side. It's coming at me faster than I can go, and I'm going over a thousand miles per hour. There was nothing I could have done. Not with just raw speed, at least. There is nothing you can do. It blew me up. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to have another video in the future where I mess around with this thing with regular land vehicles, but I kind of wanted to do one where we just blow up the planes because I had a nice collection of planes to use. And I know I didn't use all of them in the vehicle selector you saw. The B-25 wasn't working right, and the other one, it just feels like bullying because it's a glider. Anyways, till next time, this is YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how long it takes the missile to hit me. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.